lot of uh a lot of hype going around, a lot of things going around, and just, you know, a lot of FUD. Um, you know, I'm here to do what I can with the research that I've done and research that I've kind of stood on the shoulders of some other people, such as Sonny and uh, Nine Iron and some other guys that kind of led the way through the whole PDI narrative and uh, kind of walk you all through some of the things that I've uncovered, uh, me and my team, and uh, in my chat. Like, some of the stuff literally happens while we're just sitting there talking, and I'm just constantly doing research while I'm out on the rig. And uh, just, you know, I've been, you know, we've all kind of had our crazy time in this space, uh, kind of ran through ran through and got found Richard Hart around the, the pulse chain sacrifice. It's like, right, you know, maybe right before the very first pulse chain sacrifice. Uh, I hung out in the, uh, in the, in the sacrifice room and really had no idea what these guys were talking about. Um, they were speaking a different language. They were talking liquidity pools and automatic major bots. And I just had, I had no idea. They were, I was the whole different type of realm. And I'm sure some of y'all might feel that way whenever I speak. But uh, I assure you, if you keep showing up, uh, um, these things do, you know, eventually things flip for you. Um, and they definitely did for me. Um, so, I mean, I, it went from kind of me being a fly on the wall. I, uh, and then I spent a lot of my time in the BSC, um, growing communities, never really running one of my own. Um, it was just something I was always decent at as far as, you know, conveying a message and, you know, pushing to, you know, pushing investors to, you know, buy this asset because I believe in this asset or whatever it might be, whatever it might have been. Um, but I was a part of a few, you know, hundred million dollar projects and they did, they did relatively well, but it was always the same old story. We all ended up getting wrecked in the end and it was always a, over there in the BSC, it's a completely different atmosphere than what I feel on Pulse Chain, uh, where it's not PVP or it doesn't have to be in my opinion. And it's, uh, it's given me a lot of hope. And I know a lot of people have kind of felt down and out about certain things, whether Richard's doing this or Richard's doing that. And, you know, I think I've proven some of that to be not the case uh, with some of his actions. And I think a lot of it uh, is due to just either lack of research or people are just, you know, they're, they're worried about their banks, which is understandable. Um, so through all that, I knew for a fact that once I came to Pulse Chain, I knew that uh, when I came to Pulse Chain, I had a, a goal in mind of having a community and starting a community and, you know, launching a token and doing all that. And then at, over the past three weeks to a month, um, from some of the research that I went through, it's just, it's exploded and uh, it's been exciting. It's been exciting for a lot of us and the opportunity that I see on Pulse Chain and the things that I see unfolding on Pulse Chain, I think are way bigger than that even I can imagine. Um, I think Richard, whenever Richard speaks about those those moments about him fighting for our freedom, uh, you know, you know, change the money, change the world type thing, I, you know, people might fight him for it, but I, I firmly believe that's that's what he's standing up for. He's, he literally is fighting for our rights when you're using a personal wallet for personal funds and you're raising billions of dollars and they're going after him for tens of millions is it's, it's almost laughable and the proof on chain you know speaks volumes for, for what this man has done and uh it's kind of where i kind of want to get it started is i myself like i said i picked up off uh, picked up where sunny and them left off and i guess i'll let sunny speak real quick about maybe how he found 414 and the atropa and then i will go i'll i'll chime in right after that is that okay sunny what do you think yeah that works cool go ahead bud uh, you know, some of the things about Pulse Chain kind of early on, Richard even talking about it being the most liquid chain there is, um, there's, there's truth to it. And from the fork, we literally forked and copied every LP that was already on Ethereum. So that put us, you know, eons ahead of everyone else. Um, they are all still running in the background, Uniswap, SushiSwap, all those still have what's now PWETH in them and are arbitrageable for the people that have made the bots and, and, and run those APIs. So where I saw the opportunity was in the LP because all of these tokens that were never in LP start to come into LP, right, from, from the airdrop and from other holders. And using those LPs when you start to have more than one pool, 
which on every other chain, we usually just have one pool, right? You play on ETH, you play wrapped ETH into your Pepe or your other shit coin. So it goes up and down one pool. Um, starting to notice here that when we made wrapped pulse pools, it was arbitraging with those Uniswap pools. Started to show me that when you were in LP, you could take advantage of that and just earn a little bit off of every trade. So if you made your own pool, you could direct volume that way. And that's what got me into the theory when I, when I first made A1A. I was like, all right, I'm going to take these top 30 or 50 or whatever PRC20 copies, put them all in pools together and see if they don't arbitrage out you know, and, and create stronger liquidities, which they very well did. Um, that got me into seeing what 414 uh, and the Atropa ecosystem was essentially doing and spreading those LPs out way, way more. Um, that's a much, much more complex ecosystem than what I made. Mine's very simple math and it works and flows. Um, so all, all of these things were all leading towards liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. So while a lot of people look at price appreciation or depreciation on Pulse, it's because they're literally not helping to build anything. They're not doing anything, right? If you put two tokens in, in an LP, if you put Pulse and Pulse X, you're giving both of those tokens actual worth because they're paired to something else rather than just being standalone and, and having or not having liquidity. Um, so that really starts, I think, where, you know, after, after building that ecosystem and, and seeing it flow properly, um, I mean, I've made tokenized assets now too that are, you know, a whole next LP layer deep, but, uh, I think that's where the rigs here really started to see a lot of these LPs in the background with the stable coins and, and how they were all working together. Yeah, man, dude, absolutely. Um, uh, it gets, it, I mean, and things, as I, as I started look, looking, looking into more of it, uh, like I also went into like the relationship route of it, but I'm where you think that was right now, such as Stability AI. Um, stability AI is a, and it's still the Stability Diffusion um, are two different types of protocols, but they can be utilized the same way. Um, stability AI, AI itself, when they, whenever they explain it, it's like dropping marbles, right, on the floor, and they spread out evenly across the board. So whenever Richard talk, I can't dump 400 million into PulseX only, because if he does that, eventually these arbitrage bots are going to take everything that's paired to PulseX and evenly spread it out all the way across the board. This does two things. Number one, you're going to, you, you can't, it's very hard for someone to manipulate a, a pool. Um, they can't go in, say, if you launch something on this DEX and they go to another DEX and they try to man manipulate the price, the arbitrage bots will do their part to eat away at that price to make sure that you get the best price possible across the chain in total. So that's that's one great thing about you know, these arbitrage bots is that you're going to get, usually 90% of the time, you're going to get the best price. And someone can't go in and manipulate it. I I've, 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 I've tested this theory by, uh, I launched a token and heard it all, didn't, I mean, like, with BFF, Pulse, everything i took it just one to one as in value one to one so if i had 0.001 bff i paired it with 0.00 of my token by the time i was done it was like 86 dollars a token here you know four dollars a token here seven dollars 0. 0.0006 0. 0.0004 and then left it i let it sit for about four days i didn't even reckon didn't really wasn't paying much attention uh and the a m bots alone through a three-day period they priced everything else to exactly 0 0.0036. And I was like, what's going on here? Uh, that's whenever I started looking more into what Stability AI is, Stability Diffusion, and these types of protocols. Then I looked up and I had seen that over like 60% of the servers at the time were running Stability AI or some sort of that type of uh, on pulse. And uh, I myself also ran a, ran a node and was using Stability AI and was like, taking screenshots of things and like took the front end that it created and like it made some insane pictures like some it made like double helixes showing you that it was a clone and it had like dye in the center of it and like there was one yeah it was just it was super unique super super cool to see like 
And it was like the day of or the day after that he posted like something very similar with Bitcoin. And you can see how far we were to like where we are now using that same sort of technology, just like taking numbers and letters and dropping into the AI as a picture and eating this full model of what the, you know, the chain came from, right? You know, we are a clone. Well, you know, the clone isn't. The clonings, the clone are important. Uh, in my opinion, I believe that the, <laughs> the point of Pulse Chain is to have these things reach parity. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. I can get into I can get into that later. Um, but like, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see that whenever, like, for where we start these uh, concepts and then where we are today have uh, completely flipped, you know, people's perspectives and given people a lot more hope, right? Um, when I sat back and I was teaching people a lot, I don't know what SDI is, right? SDI gives DAI the ability to take leverage out against it or to do flash loans out against it because DAI itself, whenever you attempt, attempt to take a loan out against DAI, you get 66 cents on the dollar. So one of the main things that hurts stable coins is uh, ill intent, right? So a flash loan, uh, and other things like that. So Dai did it kind of backwards, but it's what saved Dai for so long, right? Um, because it was very hard to go off and you couldn't hurt it because if you attempted to flash loan it, you're going to get 66 cents on the dollar. Most flash loan bots, they're going to go off and send you to a, send you another route before they send you to Dai. So when SDI was created, SDI was created by a company that launched right before um, Pulse Chain launched. The name's, it was called Spark. Um, Spark Dow, Spark Finance, um, and uh, the guy, the guy that launched it, his name's Stan McPherson, A.K.A. Hexanaut. This is the name that he goes by on Twitter. Um, Hexanaut himself, he was an ex Maker Dow engineer, right? Worked, I believe, specifically in the stablecoin area, where he has pretty much rede redefined and redesigned the entire Maker Dow ecosystem to become fully front end compatible, decentralized, in a way to where the Spark and then whenever Maker launches their new their new token uh, in Spark Finance, they will literally be the ones that, that lead the way on them choosing how decentralized they are and like once they become totally decentralized. Um, like right now, anyone can run these things. Anyone can take SDI and, you know, take the leverage out if they know the case. They know that they know how to do it, they can do it. And that was one thing that I've noticed from the very get-go is that every one of these protocols that we have seen and have been been being used on Pulse or and or on uh, MakerDAO, Spark, it's all open to the public. Everything is open source code. Everyone has the ability to do it. Um, I think that's very important. Um, it's probably why, you know, when they copied the chain and they were doing what they were doing, that was probably one of the things. It's like, look, we can't do anything that anyone else can't do. Um, given the knowledge, yes, it's maybe it takes a little work to, to find out about these things, but you know, it, it, it gave Dai a lot of power, so much power, in fact, that during the month of April, <laughs> Dai processed six hundred thirty-six billion dollars in on-chain volume in ETH, right? <laughs> on, on and then total in uh, the uh, in all stable coins combined, one point two trillion on-chain volume on ETH. That was the all-time high on ETH this past April. And Dai alone did $636 billion, right? And then, like, uh, literally, it was up 240% from the month prior. And then in April, I think, the, not April, but the month before that, it was $448 billion. So <laughs> they're doing insane numbers. They're literally, uh, there was a tweet by Sam, I believe, a couple days ago, where I pointed this out, like literally the one month volume of Dai minted was 150 billion last month. 125 of that was through Maker. The other 100, around another 125 through Aave. Um, so these two lending protocols are absolutely crushing it, crushing it so much to where USDC, USDT, and I believe Euro E are now allowing S Dai to become, you know, pretty much use that same protocol for USDC and USDT because they were just absolutely sm smashing it across the market, which, which is huge because you can swap DAI one-to-one -one across the board with all these things. So whenever they saw this happening, um, of course, they wanted to get involved, you know, and then why wouldn't they let them, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to, 
you know, and they're just out. I mean, they crushed them in the last month to the point it was literally like 10x the, the volume, right? Uh, a rune, uh, rune from MakerDAO tweeted um, literally in one go 75 million SDAI was bought, which was more than any other stable coins on the market alone. This dude, someone bought $75 million worth of SDAI, which was literally more than you couldn't even buy that much of a stable, any other stable coin that's on the market right now. So SDI is a super powerful, super powerful token. It's uh, it's what is allowing a lot of this to go down mixed with Block Atlantica, which is an AI technology and kind of, it's a part of, but it's separated from um, Maker in and of itself. But it's this AI technology that goes around saying, okay, the consensus believes that you know, depend on, depending on the risk tolerance, you know, Spark can launch here. So Spark launched on a chain called Gnosis Chain, and they did it very discreetly. No one really knew about it. Um, but again, the, the, there's reasons for that, um, in my opinion. You can't, even go, you can't even go find Spark's logo. I mean, you might now be able to, but like not even a couple weeks ago, you couldn't even find Spark's logo over there. You literally had to search for Spark. And it's weird, they have a bunch of, like, if you go look up, like, I'm not telling anyone to go do this, but if you go look up one of your old wallets or a, a wallet you're using now, you're going to see that you have 144 airdrops of just random stuff, right? And I believe that's because it was a testing ground uh, for some of the stuff, but it's also what they do over there is they run two different types of privacy protocols. They run this, I read, they run this thing called Hopper, H-O-P, lowercase r, and R-P-C-H. These are two privacy protocols that are running on Gnosis right now. You can pay for them, I believe. It's like $9 a month for so many transactions. Um, but uh, what they do is, is they, they have these things called tickets. And uh, instead of interacting with someone's wallet directly, like you'll send, a, you'll send a, like if I want to pay Pulse OG $100, I'll send it to, it tells me to send it to this wallet. And then he goes and connects to this wallet and he grabs his funds from it. Um, Gnosis is actually a pretty fast chain. It's like five second block times at their peak with four million wallets, I believe, being airdropped at that time. They, I believe they have the most active uh, validators over there because it doesn't, you don't have to hold anything to be a validator. It's a, it's a very unique chain. Um, and why is that important? Well, the Omni bridge, right? We forked a bridge from somewhere. We forked it from Gnosis. Um, um, that's it's secure it's safe it's just it's just it makes sense okay but why would spark launch there right it's like that's interesting privacy protocols that's something that richard is uh really big on right because i think everyone would agree to that so it's just uh it was one thing that really definitely uh, sparked my interest in, in what was going on on gnosis and uh the fact that spark had launched there first and then of course you know it was on eth and then we had a copy of it over here and then we've proven that, or I, don't, I haven't proven, but Nine Iron has since proven that, uh, supposedly, not, not RH, but there's a wallet that controls the MakerDAO protocol on Pulse. Um, so I, uh, I sent a message and asked someone something, and I said, hey, you know, when, when, when Pulse chain? And their response was, like, Article 9, Section 10. Whoever controls the Maker Core controls Spark. You don't have to get the, whoever controls Spark Core can't control Maker. Pretty much giving me my answer. There's no need for us to launch there. There's no need for us to be there because any power that we do have is already in the hands that it needs to be in. Um, which is just pretty straight to the point. What yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, a roundabout way of giving me the answer. It makes complete sense. But it also, in my mind, shows us what's good, of what's really going on here. Look at look at how much dye is being minted. Look at how much is really going down. The name Hexanot, right? Um, they deleted every other tweet between each other except for Love Me Some Hex. And he tweeted that, I believe, in 2021 or 2022, uh, Hexanot did. Um, so there was like these little breadcrumbs that they left and like these relationships that I found. Um, like Maria, right? James, right? There is a real Maria, right? The real Maria used to work at MakerDAO and Ave Finance. Spark is a fork of Ave. Um, and now she runs Summer Finance, which is a front end protocol for MakerDAO. The MakerDAO front end, which used to be called Oasis, 
right? So MakerDAO used to have a dex called Oasis, right? Which is funny because you think of the movie <laughs> and then you're like the Oasis and then inside the Oasis now there's this protocol called Summer Finance that allows you to leverage even more out against your uh, against these plays. So again, anyone can run these. Anyone can run these protocols. And then it's funny because the real Maria's picture is Oprah Winfrey. You get a house. You get a house. So it was it was these relationships and these things that like kept intriguing me and kept getting me uh, digging deeper and like why is it you know so many like why does it seem like there's so many chains involved like then they went to uh, Super Chain which just launched not that long ago right which is Worldcoin which is connected to Arbitrum which is connected to um Arbit not directly to Arbitrum but base base chain Arbitrum and Optimism like it's some of the some of the bigger plays over there. Um, you know, I've, I've ran down and there was around $16 million that was, uh, coming from Polygon, um, direct, like V3 Polygon stuff that was going directly over just to, uh, to, to super chain and all these chains all have, and are all are working on privacy layers and privacy models to where just like secret, right? If y'all know, uh, Cosmos secret chain. Right, they already have something that's running up and running right now that connects ten different block, connects ten EVM chains through this thing called the Secret Tunnel. Um, Polygon has an ag layer um, that same thing. It's a privacy layer that connects multiple EVMs together, right? And then Superchain itself, same thing, privacy layers, but also connects L2s. Um, then we also know that Cosmos has this thing called Cosmosm. Funny name. But it connects directly to Solana. So it's like as you dig deeper and deeper into this, and you're starting to understand that okay, so block it. I mean, through consensus alone, we would all agree that you know we deserve more liquidity, right? And we deserve not to be technically held down by the dollar, right? How do you move away from that? Um, a few ways. It's not. It's not going to be easy at first. I mean, first you'd have to onboard many different fiats, which is what I've seen. I've seen Hong Kong uh, USD, like Hong Kong C, Hong Kong T, uh, the British pound C, the British pound T, uh, USDC, USDT, the Euro C, and the Euro T. And you can actually go on Pulse Chain right now, and you can see the Euro C and the Euro T. Um, or actually, I believe they're active with logos over there. So, like, moving into one, two, three, what, six new fiats, um, and if you have, if they, if seemingly, if they pair those with, with and into each other, so if the USD, if USD did collapse, or USDC collapses, or USDT collapses, the other end of Euro C or Euro T or Hong Kong should be able to, or would seemingly go up in value, right? So, it's like, they're, they're not going to push away extreme away from fiat completely because it would, you know, they have to onboard people somehow. But there's got to be other ways, and it seemingly seems like they are working on other ways to where they can <clears throat> move away from the way that we're used to doing it, being held solely by the U.S. dollar, valued solely by the U.S. dollar, and making ourselves pre prepared to move forward in a decentralized manner especially with someone like Rune and MakerDAO giving up their entire protocol, um, turning it completely decentralized and practically stepping away, right? I mean, you wouldn't do that unless you're, you got something big coming. And in my opinion, they have a few big things coming and some that we know. Uh, one would be the, uh, their new chain, right? We know that their new chain is going to be a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake uh, mechanism that is going to allow uh, the minting of wrapped die and wrapped USDC and wrapped USDT. Along with that, they're going to be launching two new tokens, a new, and they're just, this is what they're called, new stable and new governance. Um, I believe that their new stable token for the first three years is going to remain pegged to a dollar. And then after that, it's going to fluctuate in value from 75 cents to a dollar 25. And I think that's because they're going to be using that either in the background to help help maintain DAI's peg or help maintain 
other stable coins pegged because there is a there is a direct correlation to a stable swap that's going to be right there sitting you know at the forefront of all this twitter this is all all the arbitrage bots will be right there just constantly eating away at any value trying to jump around at it anyone with anything trying to get de de pegged or de de correlated those arbitrage bots will be eating away at anything that has value and it's always going to out outpace a human and it's always going to do what it can to make to keep an equilibrium and as we've seen on pulse chain pulse chain is built to be an equilibrium to find a balance um so i mean it's, it's like it's, it's it's something to be excited about you know and you know through more and more research and more and more looking and hunting around you know i've i've seen that you know <clears throat> there's there's more to hex than meets the eye i believe that the minting of it, at least maybe on pulse chain maybe other and in other places i believe hex will be utilized and is going to be utilized and might already be utilized in a, as a wrapped version um as we all know there is no wrapped version of hex right we do know that there is a t-share finance or we believe that it's called t-share finance right and that's something that's a treasury interesting right t-share finance treasury you know, and that's what Tropa's building. I mean, in my opinion, Tropa has built a decentralized MakerDAO uh, in a way to where it can run autonomously and with the help of AI. So this is no ordinary copy EVM chain. This is no ordinary run-of-the-mill BSD EVM flip. Oh my gosh, this is what we waited for. It's much bigger than that. It's it, is, it just is, and that's just from the from the research alone uh, proves that. And through the minting of you know <laughs> the three hundred and thirty six billion died on chain volume in ETH in, in a month. You know, I mean, come on, uh, Maker one hundred and twenty five billion. I mean, and if this is nothing. These are these are numbers that this is you know never. We're talking all time highs, one point two trillion on chain volume on ETH in stables alone. That's all time highs. Yeah, it's in the market we are in now. But, uh, you know, Stability AI also has this uh, as, a, as, a, as a un another unique feature. Um, and I believe we're, we're seeing it. It's called cover traffic. Um, so through the knowing how many active users there are, you can see Go Pulse launching either less tokens or more tokens. As they're launching these tokens, they're launching them with bots as cover traffic. Why is that important? Well, it's maybe it, you, you, whenever it powers that be or whatever it could be, um, you want to make sure you can't distinguish a human from a bot, right? What is a tropa built? A tropa has built a super highway of an economic model to where these bots don't know the difference between a shitty token. Or a bad token, they just know that they're trying to make a penny or two pennies, and even sometimes lose value, lose on a trade. But they'll jump across bridges, they'll come back over here, jump back across a bridge, and they can do it all in one fell trade, one one transaction. They can go from here to there to a to a centralized exchange, and then all back again in one transaction. Um, and and this is all happening right in front of our very eyes now. I mean, as far as the time frame goes, I have, I have no idea. I just know that I believe, in my opinion, they're waiting for more people to catch on to what's going on because the money is here. The value is the values here. Um, it's the net caps law works in both ways. You have either, you know, the value of every network is the number of people squared, or you can look at it as the Pareto principle, the value of, of any network is the number is the is, is the square root is actually provided by the square root of the numbers of the people so either the either the people come first and they benefit or we seek to run back into the exact same problem that we just came from because if the money's here first then the people come what do they have to gain right maybe a little bit but not as much as if the people come first and then the money shows up so, in my opinion, it's it's not a matter of if or when or how. It's a matter of getting the word out and getting people into this. I think um, 
at the end of the day, I mean, things are going to take time. Um, and a lot of this, of course, like I said, you know, it, it, some of it, of course, speculation, but the numbers that I'm reading, you can go right now to MakerDAO and you can, you can read Reams and these guys, uh, things, you know, speaking, and you know, straight at it from, you know, themselves. So it's, uh, it's a change the money, change the world type thing, in my opinion. And, uh, I'll take, I'll take a few questions right now and then, uh, I'll, I can pick right back up. Let me see. Yeah, I see someone with their hand up. I'll get you. Go ahead, bud. You can speak. You're already a speaker. Go ahead. Did you mean to put your hand up? I don't know who buddy is, but I'm, I'm I think it's me. I was just coming in to, uh, invite everybody to my space on the 12th for the uh, Pulse Chain's one year anniversary. I airdropped a hundred thousand runestones on Pulse Chain. So you guys should just go check your wallet. There's some value in there. It's an NFT. And yeah, I'm also part of the PDI ecosystem very early and Atropa. Not a part of it, but I just bought it a long time ago and forgot about it. <laughs> I like chiming in and li listening to all the conspiracies about what you guys are talking about and building. It's cool. Yeah, man, I mean, no disrespect. I'm sorry. That's just uh, kind of ass. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. Be rude or anything. No, I was I'm taking. taking there's, just, there's other people. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know who Buddy is. There's a lot of speakers. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, right on, man. No, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll definitely have to. I'll definitely have to check, check, check into that. And then, uh, yeah, man, for sure, that's awesome. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's. I mean, that's what it's all about, man. It's building relationships, doing the right things for the right reasons, and then, I mean, we're all here to uh, to help grow our to help grow our brands, and we we can't yeah, clearly we can't do that alone. So yeah, I'll definitely I'll give you a follow and. I'll definitely get, uh, take a look into that, man. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I was trying to see where I had, uh, I had, didn't I, I was kind of, I was already kind of stumbling around a little bit before you even spoke up. Are you, are you there, are you there, uh, secret agent? It's probably not a big. Kind of, I'm just starting to get set up for the day. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like MakerDAO is going to be launching their own, um, well, they're going to be minting wrapped, wrapped die, wrapped USDC, wrapped USDT. And it's, it's interesting because we do know that there was around 8 billion in, uh, value that was in hex that was put inside on the ETH proof of work chain. And in my opinion, that's what they're forking. They're forking ETH proof of work and possibly um, a proof of stake chain and we do know that they're going to be using a deterministic type of uh, type of gas token which is going to be a stable token since they're going to be minting stables um, and we do know XDAI was Gnosis before Gnosis chains so maybe they were going to may, in my opinion it was probably XDAI that they took a snapshot of um and then um, all the uh, <clears throat> all the interesting like 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 all the airdrops and stuff that you see over there that you know seemingly don't have value. Um, they could be gateways or portals um, to uh, you know to where people will be able to connect and utilize those for the the privacy trading. Where I touched on that a little bit. Whenever the tickets that I talked about, um, and that's another thing where I found on ETH, which was another very interesting interesting thing. Whenever I was uncovering a lot of this, uh, trying to find out where value was or value was hidden and this and that. I found out that when you wrap things to the eighth layer, like, so when you literally take something and you wrap it and you put it inside an NFT and then you take that NFT and put it inside another NFT and then, but there's a certain, there's a certain point to where there's an algorithm in a, a company called block SEC. And as soon as you hit a certain score, it considers it a scam. Right. And then it doesn't matter what you put in there after that, that value is no longer seen. And I ran across this a couple of times to where I found things of value from four and five years ago of these, uh, of holding up, 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 upwards of, you know, two and three hundred million dollars. Um, but they weren't being tracked. And, uh, seemingly, it, in my opinion, I think that, uh, this is something that was being set up long ago. Uh, in preparation, 
and then block SEC. Either, either it's a play on words or it literally is the blockchain SEC. But they knew exactly what to do, how many folds they needed to make, and how to get there to be automatically labeled a scam. But by doing that, when he went back over there, and then he, he, they, if someone went back over there and then unwrapped those things, they could then literally trade freely in a, in a privacy protocol, so to speak. Because then you could literally go over there and then add something to the other end of that liquidity pool and start trading. And since it's labeled a scam and that there's no value there, no one would be any of the wiser. Um, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't see any trades. You would, you, you, you know, you would have no idea that that's even happening. And this is not just on Pulse Chain. This is on BSC. This is on Polygon. This is on multiple chains where I've seen this start, but where I saw it occurring, um, especially whenever I saw bots starting to jump, the same bots that were over here jumping over on BSC and making trades. Um, I believe that he's, he copied and he snapshot more than just Pulse. I believe that he forked and copied more than just Pulse, uh, more than just Ethereum. And I think, uh, again, this is all, you know, wildly speculative, if, if you want to say that. And then, of course, you can always go out and do your own research. We also know that, you know, why is Spark important, right? And why is, and why is that have to do with anything? Well, we know for a fact that he threw 400 million of our dollars into a protocol that none of us knew about. Now, if he didn't know and or trust that protocol, you really think RH would have thrown $400 million into something like that without having any type of trust or any type of relevance to what was going on? Um, and then seemingly he, he bought Dai, he used Dai to buy his S Dai, right? The next day, he was on the leaderboard at first. They removed him. They, the next day, they changed the protocol, saying, no, you need to use wrap, staked, eat, uh, stake, eat, this and that. Removed him from the leaderboard, right? But he still held his 400, at that moment, 400 million S die. And then whenever people said that he had bought the top of ETH, he, he sure did. But he was pretty much leveraged. Like he, I think he knew it was the top, and he was leveraging himself as a leveraged play, um, because at that point he was still holding all the S die. Went back and bought the Ethereum, and people. And if you didn't, if you looked hard enough, you would see that there was only two hundred million worth of ETH. But on the other side of that, if you actually went and looked on Arkham, it still showed that he had two hundred million S die, and that the other that the die itself was reminted by him or because he was utilizing the protocol that was supposed to be used or the way it was supposed to be used possibly again that's you know I think people would have to go to dig in and do their research i haven't checked on those wallets in a little while um i've been busy uh, uh building the community and you know just because there's just there's just so much going on that, you know, just the numbers alone are absolutely mind blowing. We also know that they uh, make a doubt through another. So by him getting rid of 400 million die, pretty much burning 400 million die off the market. Not not too long after, we knew Athena Labs and um, USDE came into the game. Uh, USDE is uh, from Athena, and Maker threw 600 million at them. So right off the bat, they burnt another billion die. Um, that's pretty important because if there is eight billion in value in hex sitting at the fork, and they're trying to burn ten billion die and block Atlantica, this AI allows you to remint burned value, which is part of the protocol itself. Um, lost burnt value. Um, that means whenever they do launch their new chain, they would have 10 billion in value, including their market cap right now, right, which is worth, I believe, around 2 billion. So they would have around 10 billion in value. Um, and in my opinion, if they're forking, they would be able to bring everything to peg relatively quickly. Because um, they're not going to do what RH is doing. Uh, they're a company. They're not just going to allow stuff to launch at zero and have it run up. Um, I don't think this is an experiment. I think that this is meant to shake people out 
it's also meant to socially engineer something that needed to be done, which was bring the bring some bring bring a degen like me in front of a bunch of hexagons to let them know that this won't this cannot work without them, and we definitely cannot peg without hex. So he literally social engineer, and I think this this has been half a half a decade in the making. I think before Hex even launched, this was already something on their minds. Um, they knew that things were coming. They knew things were coming, and they knew that they were coming down hard. Um, once I saw him buy SDI, I, it confirmed a lot of my theories. It confirmed a lot just by that alone, right? It was like, why would he throw that much money into something he didn't trust? And then I looked more into it. Oh, his name's Hex or not. Well, that's funny. And then I found out he tweets about it. You know, and there's, you know, there was actually tweets too and for, for them. We, I mean, we know for a fact where he said there was going to be someone rebuilding a, a MakerDAO copy and then James using the name Maria and then there's actually a real Maria and then how a tropa works and then yeah, like the whole system behind a tropa and uh, just, you know, and then the eighth layer on Pulse that you just can't quite reach to. And in Sam's GitHub, you can read this thing where it's called the world bonus. Right, and at the world bonus states, when a particle collides without the world bonus, it leaves Earth. With the world bonus, when a particle collides, it reverts back. Um, and that's why, and we know that the number eight means money. Um, so there's a lot of eights around. Uh, there was eight billion in hex that was taken during the snapshot. There was, um, I think. I just, I just kept, I keep seeing it everywhere. It's like 8 billion this, 88 billion this. It's just, uh, but it's, it's very important. In my mind, that was like almost their target for like, when was this all going to start? Like how much value they needed to reach? How much value was going to be used and utilizing it? You know, 414, you know, take the one out, it's eight, you know. But it's like, everything does have a double meaning though, right? It's not just, because 88 can be seen as HH, which could be mean evil or whatever, for whatever, you know, however you want to look at it, right? But, and that's because it's the truth, right? If you change money and you don't change the people in control of the money, you don't change anything. You literally revert right back to where you are. Like 414 itself can, be, can mean the bringer of light or the destroyer of worlds, right? Like there's double meaning behind all this. Because it's absolutely the truth. And giving people the opportunity to become wealthy and it falling right back in to the same people's hands that it just came from, like we fall, we're just going to fall right back into the, to the, dest the destroyer of worlds of what we just were, right? So the opportunity here, I think, is patience. Is what well, the learning or anything is definitely patience. Um, he's of course he's going to shake everyone out, right? I mean, he spent I don't know how much money he spent trying to keep Hex above 10 cents, and maybe it wasn't just him, but I mean, I think that he did try to keep it above a certain level, and then eventually he understood too, like, hey, I'm not, not even, not even I'm above the market, and then doing what he did, um, just <laughs> you know, just flooding people out even more. You know, and then from crypto Twitter's tweets to the way he was acting, and it's like, well, I mean, I think in my you know, he felt a little bit betrayed. Um, I just, I just think he did. But I, all it is is anyone that believes in what he's doing, it's just a absolutely massive opportunity. Um, again, I mean, it's a, a lot of this is on chain, a lot of it's speculation, and but uh, when you put a lot of people together and people believe in believe in things and they believe in fate and they believe in karma i think uh he might he might never stream again guys like there's people just begging for him to stream and in my opinion he doesn't have to he's giving us the opportunity to grow our communities doing the right things for the right reasons because the money is here and it's coming so it's like, it's either up to us to get people in, 
are up to us to hold or, you know, remain patient and just see what happens or at least be somewhat active and somewhat vigilant and, you know, have your voice heard because he's fighting up against the powers that be that God, who knows? I mean, and even some of us speaking out about certain things, who knows? But I could care less. You know, like, come at me. <laughs> I'm going to speak out for, for, for a man that I believe that um, is doing everything that he can in his power to do and change so many lives. And uh, I just, there's a, I, I have just a gut instinct <laughs> whenever it comes to, to random things. And I have, since my first theory, since the beginning of my theory, I have, a lot of it has just been solidified more and more. Um, yeah, maybe my theory and nine irons are completely like kind of different in, in an aspect, but that's because I can tell you right now, RH has a way to peg this nine different ways to Sunday. And that might be the whole thing using maker vaults, using balancer vaults over collateralization. Um, like he, he said, whenever he, he's like, when, whenever he meant, I, you have no idea how I can build a stable coin. He, he meant it. And I think the best is yet to come. But it's all about shaking out the weak hands and the undeserving and the doubters and the haters. Just do not let them shake you out of your bags. Stay poised. Keep to the, uh, you know, keep to a plan. Make a plan. You know, my family thinks I'm insane. So be it. Um, but uh, there's way too many moving parts for me to keep up. So I'm sharing the knowledge with y'all guys in hopes that y'all can also go out look at this stuff and prove me wrong, you know, or, you know, prove me right. Hey, Zach, go ahead, bud. You are insane. That, 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 and that's a compliment coming from me. Like that's, I don't know. Did anybody else take in like intake that information, even like a fraction of what that means for, for people? <laughs> like just, just take a fraction. Uh, what what does Q say? In November, you could get a, a huge bag of Pulse for like 500 bucks, and now that's worth like 5000 somewhere along those lines. That was in November, six months ago, roughly. And then in six months, it's going to roughly pay it a dollar, theoretically. That's some... Uh... Woo! <laughs> I love you, that. Yeah, there's some, uh, some other interesting things that I found, too, was... Uh... Axion itself. So Axion had had this uh, thing called Warp Finance. Warp Finance uh, found out a way to tap into untapped liquidity and utilize it in a certain way. But they also had this very interesting gamification to where you get three parts of a ship, you create three, then you create one big bond, and that big bond would be create a big ship that would allow you to quote unquote leave the Earth, right? It's like, that's interesting, because that sounds a whole hell of a lot like creating three bonds to make the Teddy Bond, right? And then and, and Axion's uh, whole thing was you create the three ships, you create the three, sh the three parts of the ship, where are three bonds to create one bigger bond, which is a ship that leads you to higher yield. Um, I believe that that could possibly be the world bonus, which is, quote unquote, level two or layer two of dysomnia. Um, a lot of what Axion looks like and a lot of what Axion is doing, you know, Cosmos and all this stuff, like it has a lot to do with, you know, out of this world. Finding that I was like, when that sounds a whole hell of a lot like what's been happening, like with these bonds that we're talking about here, you know, you were able to claim it one for one. They moved to Polygon. Um, they were audited four times but there was an inflation bug or did the OA just dump and remove itself from the, from it and then just said, now nah, we're still some of your technology too. Or is there just, you know, bigger stuff at play here? Um, that remains to be seen. I just thought that, that was a very interesting tie that you could claim it one for one for hex at one point. Then they said it was an inflation bug. And then, you know, the ties to a trophy with the three bonds into to another bond, and then, you know, the whole out of this world thing, which is directly written into the code on in Sam's code, which is, you know, the world bonus being 
Yeah, it's just uh, that's definitely an interesting. Uh, it's in it's, it's in Sam Sam's GitHub. We talked about the world bonus, and a lot of the stuff that he writes about is it talks it like it, it sounds like a game, but as you read the game, like it'll say like the uh, there's three different three different types of explosions. There's, there's, there's the explosion, which is like the X and Y particles leave here, and they start at a fifty fifty point, and then they break across, and then they continuously explode at an ever increasing rate. To till they equal x and y axis on this other side, and then there's this thing called like the fire, which is a trickling type of effect, but it's continuous from x and y to an x. And so to me, it sounds a whole hell of a lot like liquidity pools. And then there's this the rain effect, where it's just drizz, just kind of drizzling across um, from one x and y axis to this other x and y axis, and then equaling fifty fifty. So, like I said, I mean, this is a, uh, I'll drop some more of this stuff, like, in, in the links to where y'all can, like, look at the GitHub and, uh, you know, start deciphering some of this stuff for yourself, because it's, again, you know, it's, it's too much for one person to, uh, to attempt to, uh, to look into, but I, I beg y'all to go and look at my account, like, just go and look at the die, um, like, the die volume and what die has been doing, which is insane, right, and, uh, some of the stuff Nine Iron has uncovered has been pretty awesome. Um, you know, he, he's, he, you know, it was a huge inspiration. Same thing with anyone that Sonny's, uh, Sonny's pub, uh, his lounge. Uh, so I'll tag him and I'll, I'll make sure that we, uh, everyone kind of gets a little plug, um, for some of the stuff we're working on. Cause, uh, do you got to give credit where credit is due. And, uh, um, I know Spark cannot be uh, can't be used in the U.S. and that's I'm sure we all know why. Well, it's the SEC, um, so um, I believe that there's big things coming. There's definitely big things underway, and I believe Pulse is literally the heartbeat of all of it. But yeah, anyone else have any more questions, concerns, thoughts, anything like that before we uh? I know I've gone over a lot of information, but, you know, this is going to be recorded, so y'all can always go back over it and uh, re-listen and things like that. So, um, definitely, I'm, uh, let me see, I see freedom down there. See if anyone wants to pop in and say a few words, feel free to. But, uh, yeah. Any questions for anybody, guys? Y'all check on? Everyone good? I mean, I can't really say much, Rick, because you've already probably given everyone more than enough food to chew on for the entire week. Um, I mean, yeah. there's no point in me even suggesting go down and check other tangents until they've checked everything that you've said so far. It's, um... Yeah, and this was just literally... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it's, um, it's, just, it's just very deep. And I know it will overwhelm a lot of people to just even start, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, and like the whole point of this was just me to go over to what I went through and where I are today. And then as far as my forecast, I think there's no need. Um, for this moment, um, I'm just, you know, y'all can easily go find Sam at Hexanaut on Twitter. Y'all can see that he's been, what he's been tweeting about, um, some of the stuff on Gnosis that's happening, uh, lately. And, uh, yeah, I believe $1.5 million was just, uh, given to, uh, granted to go to Gnosis with USD, yeah, USDC, USDT, and Euro E. So that's going to be over there, as well as they already have SDI over there. So they have a they they were granted another one point five million in three more stable coins. So again, you got a lot of exciting times ahead, in my opinion. And uh, just hold on tight to your bags, and yeah, don't let the don't let the fight uh, worry you, because I think either either they know and they're just trying to shake you out which is absolutely fucking gross, or they have no clue, they've done no research, and they're too busy staring at charts. So that's one thing I don't do. I'm a terrible trader, so I don't stare at charts. I do my research and uh, take pride in that. And, uh, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not one to, to, 
to sit up here and chat too much, but <laughs> I guess everyone else would probably call bullshit on that. But uh, it seems like I've been given a, given a voice and given an opportunity to, to spread a message that I believe to be true. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep keep holding to that and uh, we'll keep, I'll keep these up, you know, once every couple of weeks for sure, just to keep y'all guys updated and, you know, keep uncovering and, you know, you know, if anyone finds anything or wants to share anything, you know, you're always able to DM me or you can always find me on Telegram at, uh, what is it, Ringy XXX Pally, I'll drop it in the, uh, I'll drop it in the, uh, and my TG as well, or my, not my TG, and my Twitter stuff, so y'all can find me on Telegram too, so, yeah, man, everyone have a great evening, we'll go ahead and shut it down, I appreciate you guys, have a good one.